So once again, welcome back to the session, everyone. <clears throat> so in the last two days of session, I mean, the last two days of our revision phase or in the crash course, we have already discussed about the internal control system as well as the direct controls and their test of controls. In addition to which, we have also discussed on the deficiencies, recommendations, and test of controls. Again, from the area of all risk, we have already covered the <clears throat> risk as well as responses that have to be taken by the auditor in relation to the scenario. And in today's session, as we discussed in the last day, we will be starting with the most important area of our syllabus. That's the area of substantive procedures. So basically, we know that substantive procedures or the area of audit procedure is one of the most crucial area in our AA syllabus, as well as in case if you're planning to attempt the AAA paper, it is also equally important in your AAA as well. So we have actually discussed about all the possible substantives during our regular sessions. So we have covered the file called substantive procedure. I will be sharing the same file in the group today itself. So we will start our discussion part with the same notes itself so that you can get a proper picture on what have to be considered as part of substantives and all. So basically, when it comes to the area of substantive procedures, well, we know that substantives will be asked in multiple ways during the course of your exam. Substantives can be asked in many ways. And mainly substantives will be purely be part of your either your 20 mark question or be part of your 30 mark question. And again, substantives will also be one of the question along with your audit risk as well. So this substantive curve questions will be tested in multiple ways, substantive procedures. Either you might be getting a direct question on substantive. So we can call it as general substantive, whereby you might not be getting a scenario that the examiner will directly ask you for the substantive procedures in relation to the revenue. And they might not have mentioned much with regarding revenue in the scenario. So you can just write the points which you already knew about the revenue. Or else there can also be chances of having scenario specific substantive whereby you will be getting a scenario and the, on the basis of the scenario, you might be asked to provide the substantive. So literally you have to clearly picturize what is there in the scenario and you have to write the substantives according to the scenario given. Or they can be assertions based substantive whereby you might be asked to provide the substantive procedures to confirm the valuation of the inventory or you might be asked to confirm the existence of property plan and equipment. So literally you have to provide substantive which is specific to the assertion or else there can also be chances of having scenario plus assertion based subsession, which means they might not have provided the assertion within the requirement, but they might have indirectly talked about the assertion within the scenario. That's scenario plus assertion type of question. So these are the set of substantives that will be properly be tested during their exam. So there can be chances of having general substantive, then there will be scenario specific substantive, Assertion based substantive and scenario plus assertion based. Is that clear, everyone? Yes. Okay. So we will look into each type of substantive procedures and we will do questions from each area once after discussing the total substantive substantives that are available for the exam. So, as I mentioned, we will start with this file. And on the basis of this file, we will explain substantive procedures. Okay. <clears throat> so, so basically, we have studied many set of substantive procedures. Sometimes you might have followed the PPP or Kaplan textbook, or you might have already followed your faculty notes. And we will be following a particular note which is prepared from my end. And well, this particular note is based on our BPP Kaplan textbooks. And uh, we have also considered point from the past exams, mock exams, specimen papers, and from all possible sources. So the first one is with regarding the opening balance. So you will never be getting a question directly on opening balance, or that you might not be asked to write the substantive procedures in relation to opening balance. Instead, the examiner might specify in the scenario that it's a new client for the audit firm. And the previous year audit engagement was not performed by any auditors. In that case, we can literally understand from the scenario, the closing balance of the company might be misstated. So as an auditor, if the exam is asking us to write the substantive procedures, what we need to consider that they are mentioning something with regarding the opening balances. So opening balances have to be tested. Clear? In the same manner, they might be asking you to write the substantive relating to the bank. So if you get a question on substantive relating to bank, 
automatically you have to literally look at the scenario. You have to clearly focus what it is mentioned in the scenario. And you have to provide the substantive procedures purely according to the scenario itself. Say, for example, if the scenario specifies that the client company have already prepared a bank reconciliation statement, then in that case, you can go for the reperformance or recalculation of bank reconciliation statement to confirm its accuracy. On the other hand, if it is clearly mentioned that the company have not yet prepared the bank reconciliation statement, you won't score any mark in writing pre performing bank reconciliation. They are not that. So, this is how you have to write the substantive. So, clearly read what it is mentioned in the scenario and write the substantives accordingly. Is that clear, everyone? Makla clear or no? No, sir. Voice breakdown. Voice breakdown. Ah, sir, that is. Break on now. Okay, clear on now. Yes, sir. Okay, yeah. Then moving on to the next one, directive's emoluments. So we have already studied properly about the director's emoluments. So when we know that when it comes to director's emoluments, it includes all the payments which are being paid to a director. That includes salaries. In case of fees, then that fees will be included. Any bonus paid to the directors, pension contribution, retirement benefit, non-cash benefit, compensation for the loss of office. Everything will be considered under the director's emoluments. So if the examiner is asking you to provide substantive procedure in relation to bonus payouts for the directors, you can use the same director's emoluments cup point. Again, if the examiner is asking you to provide substantive procedures in relation to the pension contribution, again, you can use the same point. But there should be a confusion that will be created from end. While reading the scenario, you should clearly understand whether the examiner is asking you about the director's emoluments or any sort of payments that is made to an employee. Say, for example, if the examiner is asking you to write bonus payments for the employees' car substantives, in that case, you should literally focus on the payroll substantives instead of writing about director's emoluments. So the director's emoluments will consist of only any sort of payment that is being made directly to a director and not to any other employee. And again, as I mentioned in the class, the first two points with regarding the general director's emolument should be used only if the examiner is asking you for director's emoluments itself. On the other hand, if the examiner is asking you to write substantives relating to director's bonus or any other amounts, then in all those cases, you can use points from here. And instead of using the term emoluments, replace it with whatever being asked in the question. Say, for example, if the examiner is asking you to write Substantive procedures in relation to the director's bonus. In that case, what you can do, you can inquire each individual director to confirm the bonus listed are complete and are in line with their expectation. You can also compare the emoluments. Instead of emoluments, replace it with bonus. Compare the bonus with the previous year bonus and with the expectation. Agree bonus to the payroll records. Review director's contract and ensure bonus are consistent. Then consider the adequacy of disclosure for director's bonus are in accordance with applicable accounting standard. So mention it like that. If you're getting a question on director's bonus, then you replace the emoluments cut term with that of the bonus. Or if you're getting pension contribution, replace it with the same amount. Clear? Okay. So if the examiner is asking you to write substantive procedures in relation to revenue, definitely you can use the same points. Then purchase and other expenses. Purchase and other expenses where in the confusion create under the Purchase and other expense and which amount. Sometimes if the examiner asks for purchase of products, maybe raw materials for the company. So what does it mean? Which is the other accounting area that will be affected by the purchase of a raw material? Payables. Payables. So you have to clearly read the scenario and check whether they are asking you about purchases or payables. Even if the scenario mentions that it's relating to purchases, if there is an outstanding payment that need to be made to the supplier, then it is 
payables balance. So you can use the points relating to purchase and payables, which we have studied on the basis of assertion. Again, if it is some other expense, and if the company have not made the payment on time, then that should be treated as accrual rather than writing procedures relating to expenses. Purchase outstanding payment purchase and payables then you know where the expense on the or pressure and the other in the expense in the paisa could it land or the other and the accruals are again clear yeah most commonly sales tax liability will be asked as a direct question moving on payroll when it comes to the payroll you must always consider whatever payments being made to the employees should be considered under the payroll cost then provision, whenever it is mentioned in the scenario that there is any sort of legal claim against the company or the company is uh, having some sort of cash outflow on the basis of past obligation, sorry, present obligation as a result of their past event. Or there is something that is mentioned in relation to the violation of any other law and regulation, then in all these cases, we can consider writing substantive procedures in relation to provision. Again, receivables. Receivables is one of the most important substantive. So, which is the most important assertion within the receivables? Existence. Existence, Existence is the most important assertion within receivables. Receivables in the third important one on existence. So, we must always consider writing points relating to existence. So, we must receivables in the existence confirm the event and the substantive. Which includes both alternative audit procedures as well primary procedure that's obtaining confirmation from the client company, the third party. Again, you must also be having good knowledge on completeness, existence, as well as valuation. These are the main three assertions. Okay. So most probably you might be getting assertion specific question from the area of receivables. So do study the assertion specific points. Then when it comes to the inventory. So what all are the substantives we have learned about inventory? First one is assertion specific. Then? Third party. Uh, inventory held with third party, right? Held with third party. Okay. Then? Before the inventory count. Yes. During the inventory. Yes. Before the inventory count. Before the count. Then? During the inventory. During the, During During the inventory the count. count. Then? After, after, the, after the inventory count. After the inventory count. Okay. Standard then, costing. Standard standard when the inventory costing. is recorded, on, standard costing. Then continuous, 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 inventory. continuous inventory record. Continuous inventory record. So we have studied these many substantives in relating to inventory, right? So we have studied assertion specific points, which includes completeness, rights and obligation existence, then cutoff, accuracy, valuation, allocation, and classification. Again, we studied about performing the audit procedures before the inventory count, attendance at the inventory count, then after the inventory count, inventory held by third party, standard costing method, and continuous inventory count. So literally, we have studied this many points. So whenever you get a question on the area of inventory, you should always be having this confusion. If you does not have any confusion in writing inventory related points, it means that you haven't studied the substantives properly. Because if you have already studied the substantive, then when you get the scenario, you should clearly identify what is actually being asked there. So if they have actually asked us to perform the substantive to confirm the valuation of receivables, it's an assertion specific one. So you need to clearly provide substantives for confirming the valuation itself. Then, if this scenario specifies that the company, some of their inventories are held with third party, then you should include points in relating to confirm balances that are being held with third party. And you need to clearly look when this particular count are going to be taken, whether the count have already been taken place, whether the count is going to be taken place, or whether the count is ongoing. So if the count is ongoing, then you need to write the points in relation to during the count. If the count is going to be undertaken, then you need to consider writing points relating to before the count. And if the count is already undertaken, then you have to provide the points relating to after the count. Or if it is mentioned somewhere that the inventory are being valued at standard cost, clearly you should provide points in relation to standard costing method. 
again if there is something mentioned in the scenario that specifies that company is following continuous inventory count rather than annual inventory count then entirely the procedure should be written on the basis of inventory valuation when we perform continuous inventory count so you should provide the points accordingly so always stick on to the scenario as well as to the requirement clearly understand what is actually being mentioned in the scenario then we have already mentioned about trade payables well these points are common for both trade payables and purchase so even if you're getting a question on payables or purchase you can use the same point and moving forward one of the most important is the known current assets so what all have we actually learned with regarding known current asset we have studied about the completeness then existence valuation rights and obligation then most importantly we have studied points in relation to addition of non current asset then disposal of non current asset and self constructed asset again we have studied about the valuation of depreciation about the revaluation of pp so you should clearly read and understand from the scenario about what they actually mentions about the company suppose if the scenario specifies that the company have done a review of the property plan and equipment so is there any difference between review and revaluation review and revaluation same or no 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 both are entirely different when it comes to revaluation we will be doing it as per ia 16 we will be increasing or decreasing the value of asset when it comes to review we are just checking the condition of the asset so if the examiner is specifying that the company have done a review of asset then it is not necessary to provide the points in relation to revaluation only if it is clearly mentioned that the company have revalued their capital asset then only you should provide points in relation to the revaluation of pp again it may be mentioned in the scenario that the company have acquired some of the asset after disposing of it old assets so it may be properly be emphasized much more on the acquisition of new asset but it may not be mentioned much regarding the disposal of their asset but if it, if there is a term that shows that the company have acquired many of the new asset after disposing of existing one then in that case you should include points in relation to both the addition of non current asset as well as with regarding disposal of non current assets so you should clearly understand what it is specified appo ippol nokki konam addition nadathi ennu parayumba adu disposal nadathi irana nokka aana ennundengil addition and disposal ne edanam again even if they mentions about the addition of asset at the same time you should clearly understand whether they have actually added up a new asset after purchasing it or whether they have self constructed that particular asset if the assets are being self constructed then the points are entirely different because we have literally studied points in relation to both the self constructed asset and points in relation to the addition of assets so self constructed assets points are entirely different because the accounting treatment will be different and at the same time if the addition of assets is done it should also be different so you have to clearly understand which is actually being taken by the company again when a company have purchased some of the vehicle or any other asset if the scenario specifies like that you should clearly understand the business of the company if the company is involved in a vehicle retail industry well we know that for that particular company that particular asset is an inventory rather than a non current asset so if they want if they are requiring you to perform valuation of the vehicle then you should write the points in relation to valuation of inventory or if the company is a pharmaceutical company and the examiner is asking you to write points in relation to the valuation of pp sorry valuation of vehicle then in that case since it's a pharmaceutical company for them a vehicle is a non current asset so that should be valuation of pp so on the basis of the nature of business only we will be deciding on whether it's actually a pp or an inventory so you should clearly read the scenario and understand whether we have to treat that particular amount as pp or an inventory clear is that clear everyone yes sir then non current liability as we already discussed in our regular session most probably you might not be getting a question to right substantive procedure in relation to non current liability but still you can get a question for writing substantives for the long term loan well we know that 
any loan that have to be repaid over an year will be treated as a non-current liability or any bad or doubtful, sorry, any debts that have been taken by the company, which need to be repaid over a period of one year should be treated as non-current liability. And if the company have treated non haven't treated non-current liability appropriately, the balances will be misstated. So the examiner will be asking you to identify the substantive procedures that have to be performed by the auditor in relation to the non-current liability. Then you have to provide these points. Then again, intangible asset. When a company have acquired any of the intangible asset like patent, copyright, trademark, license, brand name, any intangible asset, in all those cases, the treatment will be same. But you have to properly understand from the scenario about the intangible asset, whether the company have actually purchased it or not. And if the company have purchased an intangible asset, then you can include these points. So from the scenario, the first thing that you have to do is the fact that you need to identify whether it's an intangible asset or not. Okay. Again, moving forward, it's with regarding the research and development expenditure. When a company spends significant amount on research and development expenditure, they might be asking us to write the substantive procedures relating to the same. But again, before writing the substantive procedure relating to research and development, properly read the scenario, try to pick the scenarios, key points, and write the substantives accordingly. Then again, when it comes to the going consent procedure, you should never try to include these points directly. Rather than that, try to focus on the scenario, ask all scenario specific procedures first, and after that, only move on to the general points. Then again, moving forward, it's about the prepayments and accruals. So basically, when it comes to the prepayments, so it means a payment which is already being done before the company have rendered the service. And accruals means the company is yet to pay the amount even after rendering of a particular service. So whenever something is mentioned with regarding outstanding payment, it should always be considered under the head of accruals. Say, for example, it may be mentioned that a company uh, is liable to pay three months salary to the employees. However, they have not paid the payment. So rather than writing points in relating to payroll expense there, you should include the points in relating to accruals as the salary is being outstanding for the past three years. Sorry, three months. Again, if the company have made any advance payment to anyone, it should be considered under prepayments. Then equity share capital, you might be getting that equation. Same for the dividend as well as reserve. And you might be getting questions on uncorrected mistakes as well. And sometimes it may be mentioned that you are in the final stage of audit and you will be asked to perform procedures in relation to the overall financial statements at the final conclusion stage. So in that case, you should perform procedures in relation to the overall review of the financial statements. And it's a very rare question, but still, if you get the question, you can clearly write the answer. You might be asked to provide software procedures by using CAT or computer assisted auditing technique. You might be asked to perform procedures. So if you get a question to write the computer assisted auditing techniques, then you can use four major points there. You can use the CAT for the purpose of performing analytical procedures. You can use the CAT for the purpose of selecting representative sample you can use it for recalculation. You can use it for cutoff testing. So these are the four things that you can perform by using CAT. So analytical procedures, representative sample select, recalculation, cutoff testing. So sometimes if the examiner might be asking you to write software procedures for revenue or receivables, then you can mention that audit software can be used to perform analytical procedure by comparing receivables days with the prior year and industry data. Audit software can be used to select a representative sample of receivables for further investigation. Audit software can be used to recalculate the allowance for receivables to ensure mathematical accuracy. CAT can be used to undertake cutoff testing by assessing the dates of last sales invoice relate to the pre-year and, and uh, sorry, uh, sales return relate to the pre-year and, and those related to the post-year and were excluded. So this is what you can do as part of the audit software procedure. Is that clear, everyone? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Sorry? 
സോ ഓഡിറ്റ് സോഫ്റ്റ്വെയർ പ്രൊസീജിയേഴ്സ് എന്തിനൊക്കെയാണ് യൂസ് ചെയ്യാൻ പറ്റുക എന്ന് ചോദിച്ചു കഴിഞ്ഞാൽ നാല് കാര്യത്തിന് വേണ്ടിയിട്ടായിരിക്കും നമുക്ക് അനലിറ്റിക്കൽ പ്രൊസീജിയേഴ്സ് യൂസ് ചെയ്യാം അതായത് കമ്പാരിസൺ നടത്താൻ വേണ്ടിയിട്ട് സാമ്പിൾസ് സെലക്ട് ചെയ്യാൻ വേണ്ടിയിട്ട് യൂസ് ചെയ്യാം റീകാൽക്കുലേഷൻ നടത്താൻ യൂസ് ചെയ്യാം കട്ട് ഓഫ് ടെസ്റ്റിംഗ് നടത്താൻ വേണ്ടിയിട്ട് യൂസ് ചെയ്യാം ഓക്കെ ഹോറൈറ്റ് സോ ദിസ് വാസ് ദ ആക്ച്വൽ സബ്സ്റ്റാൻഡീവ് പ്രൊസീജിയേഴ്സ് ദാറ്റ് വി വെ ഡിസ്കസിങ് ഇൻ അവർ റെഗുലർ സെഷൻ and we have also appropriately discussed all the areas before and uh, we have also studied these areas but still we have much more areas to be covered as part of the substantive procedures because other than this procedures definitely you will be getting additional questions and you can use general points for writing those substantives and i have already taught you one thing that whenever you write a substantive procedure you should be including three elements here you must include procedure then what else document information information, information. then purpose purpose yes purpose so this is what you need to include with regarding each of the substantive so you need to clearly include a procedure you have to specify whatever the document or information you want and whatever be the purpose that should also be specified there okay so well say for example consider that the company have an allowance for receivables balance mentioned in the accounts so we need to ensure the accuracy of that so what we can do in that case as a procedure we can provide recalculate can what we need to recalculate allowance for ah uh, allowance for receivables allowance for receivables and for what purpose in, in order, order to confirm mathematical the, yes in order to confirm mathematical accuracy okay mathematical accuracy so this recalculate would be considered as the procedure allowance for receivables is what we need to recalculate that's our information and what's the purpose of it it is to confirm mathematical accuracy that's a purpose so for every substantive there should be a clear procedure what will be the document or information you want that have to be specified and the purpose for which you are performing that substantive should also be clearly provided so for the purpose of which we need to literally understand the meaning of assertions so we have already studied about assertions right so well what do you mean by assertions endarnu assertion nu parnal what do you mean by assertion claims made by the claims made by yes assertions are the claims made by the management right so the management is responsible for preparing the company's financial statements and while preparing the company's financial statements they might make certain claim or they might make certain guarantees these claims and guarantees can be called as assertions and what all were the assertions for the class of transactions occurrence completeness accuracy cut off classification presentation edakke endu nanu parney occurrence completeness accuracy cut off classification presentation so as we mentioned earlier assertion are the claims raised by the management so management is raising a claim that all the transactions that they have recorded have actually occurred and that occur that one is occurred for the entity and they again confirms that all the transactions are being completely recorded they claims that all the transactions are accurately recorded again they claims that the transactions have been recorded within the correct accounting period right for the cut off they specifies that the transactions are recorded within correct accounting period classification they ensures that the transactions are being recorded in the correct accounting head presentation they mentions that the transaction are being recorded in accordance with applicable financial reporting framework so this is what the company's management claim and it is the responsibility of the auditor to ensure whether this actual claim is correct or not so suppose consider that <clears throat> it is mentioned in the scenario that there is fuel expenses relating to the entity and it's 14629 is a fuel expense so they have recorded fuel expense in the scenario and the examiner is asking us to perform procedures to confirm the fuel expense balance so what we need to do management have claimed that 
this fuel expense have actually occurred and this one is occurred for the entity so how can we confirm that in order to confirm the occurrence you should always trace the transactions to supporting documents right transactions to supporting documents always keep that in mind namaku occurrence confirm cheyanam nare transaction supporting documents like trace cheyanam which means nammal endha cheyandathu agree the expenses in the general ledger to supporting documents such as purchase invoices and goods received now to confirm that the company have actually purchased fuel expenses sorry for purchase fuel for the current year and it is relating to the company's use itself clear okay next we need to confirm whether the transactions are completely recorded so fuel expense complete at record it no nariyana completeness confirm cheyanad enna endadu to confirm completeness we need to trace supporting documents, documents to, to transactions. transactions yeah supporting documents to transactions so how can we confirm that we can agree a sample of purchase orders to the ledger right to the purchase ledger in order to confirm that all the transactions are being completely recorded manslayo ക്ലിയർ ആയി മക്കളെ അപ്പം ഒക്കറൻസ് കൺഫേം ചെയ്യാൻ എപ്പോഴും എന്ത് ചെയ്യേണ്ടത് ട്രാൻസാക്ഷൻ സപ്പോർട്ടിംഗ് ഡോക്യുമെന്റ്സിലേക്ക് ട്രേ ചെയ്യണം കംപ്ലീറ്റ്നസ് കൺഫേം ചെയ്യണോ സപ്പോർട്ടിംഗ് ഡോക്യുമെന്റ്സ് എടുക്കുക എന്നിട്ട് ട്രാൻസാക്ഷനിലേക്ക് വേണം ട്രേ ചെയ്യാൻ ഓക്കെ ക്ലിയർ ആക്യുറസി ടു കൺഫേം ആക്യുറസി വോട്ട് വി ക്യാൻ ഡൂ വി ക്യാൻ ആ മാത്തമാറ്റിക്കലി ആക്യുറസി കറക്റ്റ് ആണ് നിൽക്കണം റീകാൽക്കുലേറ്റ് എ സാമ്പിൾ ഓഫ് ഇൻവോയ്സസ് ഇൻ ഓർഡർ ടു കൺഫേം ദ മാത്തമാറ്റിക്കൽ ആക്യുറസി ഓഫ് ദി ഫ്യൂൽ എക്സ്പെൻസ് ക്ലിയർ then cut off correct aanu nariyanam engane cut off correct aanu nariyan petta we can obtain purchase invoices of the last month of the year and we can review whether they have been included within the correct accounting period then how can we ensure the classification we need to understand whether the fuel expenses are being included within the correct accounting head we can obtain the breakdown of operating expenses in order to confirm whether the fuel expenses are included to confirm what classification clear which means in order to confirm whether the transactions are being recorded within the correct accounting head and to uh, find out the presentation we can review sir. the disclosures okay yes please split um breakdown um same ano split um breakdown um same alla split um nu parayumbodhu nammal oru rendu transactions alla split um nokkunnu നമ്മൾ രണ്ട് അക്കൗണ്ടുകൾ തമ്മിലായിരിക്കും സ്പ്ലിറ്റ് നോക്കുന്നുണ്ടാവുക ഒരു ടോട്ടൽ എമൗണ്ട് സ്പെൻഡ് ചെയ്തതിന്റെ ബ്രേക്ക് ഡൌൺ എന്ന് പറയുമ്പോഴത്തേനും ടെൻ തൗസൻഡ് എന്ന് പറയുന്ന എമൗണ്ട് സ്പെൻഡ് ചെയ്തു അപ്പൊ ആ ടെൻ തൗസൻഡ് എങ്ങനെയാണ് പോയെന്ന് അറിയാനാണ് നമ്മൾ ബ്രേക്ക് ഡൌൺ എടുക്കുന്നത് ഓക്കെ നമ്മൾ ആ വേർഡ്സ് യൂസ് ചെയ്യുന്ന രണ്ട് പേർപ്പസിനാണെന്ന് മാത്രമേ ഉള്ളൂ കേട്ടോ മീനിങ് സെയിം ആണ് പക്ഷെ രണ്ട് പേർപ്പസിനാണ് യൂസ് ചെയ്യുന്നത് ക്ലിയർ എവ്രി വൺ ഓക്കെ അപ്പൊ നമ്മൾ ഇപ്പൊ എന്താ ചെയ്ത് സോ ലിറ്ററലി വി ഹവ് ഡൺ a set of procedure which was to confirm the fuel expense balance and how did we do that we have tried to figure out whether each of the assertions are being properly recorded so this is how you will be considering while performing substantives on what have to be proved so whenever you perform a substantive you need to confirm whether each of the assertions are being properly treated so assertions properly are treat edekku nariya ningal endha cheyandathu occurrence correct aanu nokkanam കംപ്ലീറ്റ്നസ് കറക്റ്റ് ആണോ നോക്കണം ആക്യുറസി കറക്റ്റ് ആണോ നോക്കുക കട്ട് ഓഫ് നോക്കണം ക്ലാസിഫിക്കേഷൻ നോക്കണം പ്രസന്റേഷൻ നോക്കണം ഇസ് എ ക്ലിയർ എവ്രി വൺ ഓക്കെ ആൻഡ് അഗെയിൻ വെൻ യു റൈറ്റ് ദ പേർപ്പസ് ദ പേർപ്പസ് ഈസ് ടു കൺഫേം ദി അസേഷൻ ഹൗ ഇറ്റ് ഇസ് നോട്ട് റിക്വയർഡ് ടു റൈറ്റ് ഇൻ ഓർഡർ ടു കൺഫേം കട്ട് ഓഫ് ഇൻ ഓർഡർ ടു കൺഫേം ക്ലാസിഫിക്കേഷൻ ഇറ്റ് ഇസ് നോട്ട് റിക്വയർഡ് ടു ഇൻക്ലൂഡ് ലൈക്ക് ദാറ്റ് ഇൻസ്റ്റഡ് യു ഇൻക്ലൂഡ് ദ മീനിങ് ഫോർ ഈച്ച് ഓഫ് ദി അസേഷൻസ് സോ വെൻ യു ഹവ് പ്രൂവ് ദ കട്ട് ഓഫ് ദെൻ യു ക്യാൻ മെൻഷൻ ദാറ്റ് ഇറ്റ് ഈസ് ടു എൻഷ്യൂർ that the transactions are being recorded within the correct accounting period when you confirm the classification you have to you, then you can mention then the transaction in order to confirm that the transactions are being included within the correct accounting head so you can include the meaning clear clear ayo okay so what all are the substantive that we need to uh, sorry what all are the assertions that you need to confirm if there is something relating to class of transaction occurrence 
And by the way, what do you mean by class of transaction? What all are the things that will be included under the class of transaction? Income, expense, only income and expense. Exactly. Sir, income thing ne asa idu income thing ne substantive procedure no oranya adu revenue ano. Income thing ne substantive no oranya revenue ano. Yes. Okay. Inen okay. Next one is assertions about account balance. And what all are the things that will be included within the account balance? Assets, liability, equity. Assistance, Assets, liabilities, equity. Equity. Good. Assets, liability, and equity. So this will be included within the account balances. So what all were the assertions for the account balances? What the management will be claiming regarding account balances? First of all, they will claim that all the assets, liability, and equity recorded in the books are actually existing in the company. Then they will claim that company have rights over all the assets and obligations over all the liabilities. <laughs> they will claim that all the assets, liabilities, and equity are completely recorded and all the disclosures are appropriately provided. Then they will claim that all the transactions are being valued using appropriate accounting standards and are being accurately recorded and correctly included in the accounts. They will claim that they, are, they have included all the assets, liability, and equity within the proper accounting head, which means they will claim that they have included all the current assets within the current assets itself, current liability within the current liability. Same as that non-current liability and non-current assets are also being included in the correct accounting head. Finally, they will also ensure that, sorry, they will mention that they have also presented the things appropriately. And say, for example, if the examiner have provided us to confirm the value of vehicle worth 20,000, which includes four vehicles worth 20,000. So how can we confirm the existence of the vehicle since it's relating to an asset? So how can we confirm the existence of vehicle? Physical <laughs> verification. Physical <laughs> verification, which means which sort of tests have to be done there? Sheet to flow tests have to be done. What do you mean by sheet to flow test? We will look whether the transactions that are mentioned, sorry, assets that are mentioned in the company's books are physically existing in the company's warehouse or maybe in the company itself. So if a particular asset that is mentioned in the books actually exists in the company, that's a sheet to flow test to confirm the existence. And how can we confirm the completeness of the assets? We need to confirm whether all the vehicles are completely recorded. How can we do that? Floor to sheet. Yeah. We will go for a floor to sheet testing, whereby we will, first of all, do the physical, in, uh, maybe physical count of the asset. And one after, once after counting the assets physically, we will cross check that to the company's books. And we will confirm whether all the assets that physically exist in the company is actually included within the books. And if it is not included appropriately, it proves that the completeness is not fair. Then how can we confirm the rights and obligation? Well, when it comes to an asset, what do we need to do? We need to confirm the rights over the asset. How can we confirm whether the company is having rights over this asset? Ownership certificate. Right. Ownership. Yes. We can review the ownership certificate or registration certificate of the vehicle in order to confirm the company is having legal title over the vehicle, right? Then we need to confirm accuracy, valuation, and location. How can we do that? Recalculation. We can recalculate the depreciation figures to confirm whether the depreciation is mathematically accurate. And also we can review the revaluations done for the vehicle to confirm whether these are in accordance with IA 16 property plan and agreement. Then, well, we know that when it comes to a non-current asset like PPE, PPE should be included within the non-current asset register and should be included in non-current asset within the SOFP. So we can take the breakdown of non-current as a register to confirm whether the PP is being included correctly within the correct accounting head. So we can prove the classification. And finally, to prove the presentation, we can look whether the company have provided all the disclosures in relation to the assets as well as its related disclosures are provided in accordance with accounting standards. And as per, if something is mentioned, the local legislation can be confirmed whether it is done in as per local legislation as well.
So this will be what you need to confirm with regarding each of the assets, liabilities and equity. So the purpose of the substantive procedures in relation to all the assets, liability and equity will be to confirm the existence of the assets, whether we have got rights and obligation, then we need to confirm whether the assets are being completely recorded, whether the accuracy valuation allocation is correct, classification is correct and presentation is correct. So this will be very useful while you perform the questions in relation to MCQs. If you're getting MCQ question on the substantives related area, they might give you a substantive and they will be asking you to figure out whether it's an occurrence or whether it's a substantive relating to completeness. So to trace whether it's a substantive relating to occurrence or completeness, we can do one thing. If the substantive specifies tracing a transaction to the supporting documents, then it's occurrence. If something is mentioned that shows the supporting documents are being traced to the transaction that shows completeness. Again, if there is any sort of recalculations or kind of uh, re-performance of calculation, it will be to confirm the accuracy. If something is done with regarding dates or if they are trying to figure out whether the transactions are recording correct according period, that will be cut off. If the auditor is taking any sort of breakdown of transactions, then it can be classification. If they are relating to the disclosures, it might be presentation or completeness. Again, if the company, sorry, if the auditor is performing any sort of sheet to floor test, whereby the auditor is matching the non-current asset register to the assets counted physically, then that's existence. Ulta, whereby the auditor, first of all, performs a physical inspection and then matches it to any other documents, it's completeness. If the auditor is looking after a particular assets title or the ownership, that's rights and obligation. Again, if there is any sort of recalculation or if the auditor is matching some sort of transaction is done in accordance with the financial reporting framework, it's accuracy valuation allocation. Again, if the auditor takes a breakdown, it's a classification most commonly. And finally, if it relates just to disclosures, then it's a presentation. So this is how you have to trace the assertion in an MCQ question. So you should clearly look into the procedure and understand what the auditor performs and think about the assertions as well. And you match the scenario with that of the assertion. Clear, everyone? Yes. Okay. Okay. In both class of transaction as well as in account balance. Okay. okay so sir. literally we have studied about this assertion just to let you know that each of these assertions have to be considered while performing the substantive procedures. Because whenever we perform a substantive procedure, our ultimate aim should be to figure out whether the assertions actually exist or whether the assertions are being properly being treated in the financial statements. So, yes. assertions yes. procedures perform Yes. Accounting balance is cut off assertions. Accounting balance is cut off If it is relating to class of transaction and accounting balance. Say, for example, if revenue is the balance, revenue and receivables are in the case, it is cut off. Revenue in a base is the receivables will automatically cut off of the country. Pin endu nana, number specifically account balance in the cut off character than you general. Account balance we will be taking transactions on a particular date. Like account balance varimo, asset a particular date, etreana number assets liability equity in the On the other hand, when it comes to class of transaction, our number period are the country. So within that period of the transaction, matra of the Kanikam Barabu. Adunana. Cut off in an importance of class of transaction. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So well, uh, you know, so well, actually, we need to discuss on common substantive procedures that need to be performed by the auditor. See, whenever you get a question on the substantive, most probably you might not be able to remember all the substantives that you have already learned. So in that case, you can use some common set of substantives and about these substantives also we have already discussed in the class. So whenever you write the common substantive also, you should ensure 
that there should be clear procedure, document or information have to be specified there, and the purpose should also be provided. So procedure have to be clearly mentioned, document or information have to be provided, and the purpose should also be clearly specified. First of all, when you get a scenario, you just go through the scenario very well and you consider what you can inquire or discuss with the management. So whatever things which are being mentioned in the scenario can be considered. So the fact in the scenario have to be discussed with the management and to confirm what is your purpose to be confirmed. That purpose should be specified. Say, for example, if the scenario specifies that the company have uh, introduced a restructuring program and whereby some of the employees might lose their job and due to which we need to create a redundancy provision and the company have already recognized a redundancy provision of 10,000. Okay. Or else I will just do one thing. I'll take a question. We will just go according to the question itself. Just a moment. Sir, direct questions. Direct questions, you can make a no cut off. Okay, just read this scenario. The draft financial statements recognize profit before tax off, or else let's start from the very beginning. It is 1st July 2015. Dashing Company manufactures women's clothing and its year end was 30th April 2015. You are in the audit, you are an audit supervisor of John T and Company, and the year end audit for Dashing Company is due to come in shortly. The draft financial statements recognize profit before tax of 2.6 million and total asset of 18 million. You have been given responsibility for auditing receivables which is a material balance and as part of the audit approach, positive residual circularization is to be undertaken. At the planning meeting, finance director of Dashing Company informed audit engagement partner that the company was closing one of the small production site and as a result, number of employees would be made redundant. Redundancy provision of 1,10,000 is included in the draft financial statements. So this is what they have mentioned with regarding the scenario. So they have told us that the company's uh, finance director is planning to make some of the employees uh, redundant after the year end. So for which we, they have already recognized a redundancy provision. Then they have asked us to perform substantive procedure to obtain sufficient appropriate audit evidence in relation to redundancy provision. So they have asked us to give procedures in relation to the redundancy provision. So before doing such sort of question, you have to consider one thing. You have to think about what all things have to be confirmed by the auditor. You have to audit and the carrying a confirm to another. And I'm saying okay. First thing, auditor needs to understand whether the redundancy is being announced to the employees. Right? Okay, then where are the amount reasonable? Huh. Provision the amount reasonable or no? we need to consider whether the amount of provision is reasonable. Pine. Pin then the confirms you another. Mathematical accuracy. Okay. Accurate on the nokanam. Okay, fine. Pin. Disclosure is correct. Ah, disclosures correct at the nokanam. Okay, fine. Where then on the Okay, for the time being, it's not allowed. So, you have to consider whether the redundancy is being announced to the employees, amount of provision reasonable, accurate, disclosures. You have to start from here. So, think whether there is any possibility to ask something with the management. Management to attend and discuss it. What is the management to discuss it? Announce no. Announce management or Joshua. Okay. So you can mention that. Discuss with the management about whether they have announced the redundancy to the employees in order to confirm whether there is a 
present obligation. So that is what you need to confirm, right? To confirm whether there is a present obligation. Any, same as that you can always consider obtaining written representation from the management. So again, you have to think very well about what, about what you need to obtain written representation. If you have written representation, obtain your better. Redundancy provision, reasonable. Ah, redundancy provision, reasonable. For which you need to know the assumptions, right? And rational. So, what you can do? Obtain written representation from the management about the rational on the basis of which redundancy is calculated. Redundancy provision is determined to ensure whether it is reasonable. Clear, Ayo? Management order, number written representation, one come, and then the basis on redundancy provision created another reasonable. Any again, you can always consider obtaining an external confirmation. Even case larger again, I external confirmation. Manga better. Okay, advocate a solicitor. Sorry, a lie. In the Nanaka Why do we need that? Amount, amount, amount reason. Okay, okay. obtain external confirmation from the lawyer in order to confirm whether the amount of Probable cash outflow is one lakh ten thousand. Clear, I Okay. Any correspondence. Correspondence means it's a communication between two persons. So, if I are like a kind of correspondence, one another employee, 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 and company. And then we need to take another. Announces ego in Review correspondence between dashing company and the employees Invoice. in order to understand whether the company have made announcement in redundancy to the employees. Clear? Okay. The next, you can consider recalculation or reperformance to confirm the mathematical accuracy. What you can recalculate here? Amount of, amount of provision. So you can recalculate the amount of provision. So you have to specify it according to the scenario. Recalculate the amount of provision of one lakh ten thousand in order to confirm the mathematical accuracy. Then you can always consider performing analytical procedure, which means comparison between current year balance or previous year balance, or comparison with industry standard. And in case of difference, you can also discuss with the management about the reasons. So, if you have any analytical procedure, you can better. Okay. You can perform analytical procedure by comparing the amount of provision for amount of provision for redundancy with the Previous year or with industry standards, which we need to do is industry, industry data. data. Industry data. So That's is it possible to compare with the previous year here? No. No. Occurring. Occurring. It's not a recurring yeah. issue, so you won't be able to compare it with the prior year. Instead, you can compare it with the industry data. So perform analytical procedure by comparing the redundancy provision with that of the industry data, and in case of significant variance, discuss with the management about the reasons for the same. Sure. Then. So, well, you need to understand whether the redundancy is included. The provision for redundancy is being appropriately being included within the company's financial statements. So, what do you can do? You can obtain the breakdown of expenses in order to confirm whether the expense in relation to the redundancy provision have been included in the statement of P&L. Clear? Expense in the breakdown provision that related to the expense include it on the confirm GNIT. Then, again, you can consider using bond minutes. Well, we know that whenever a company faces any issues in the market, definitely they will be discussing about those issues within the board meeting. And whatever things that they have discussed in the board meeting will be included within the board minutes. So by reviewing the board minutes, what do you can confirm here? Announcement. Yes, you can confirm the announcement of redundancy, right? So you can review the board minutes in order to confirm whether the announcement of redundancy have been made to employees to consider the possibility of having present obligation. Clear? Is that clear, everyone? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. No. Sir, first point. 
പ്രീമിയം കുഴപ്പമുണ്ട് നമ്മളോട് ഇവിടെ ഫൈവ് പോയിന്റ്സ് ആയി ചോദിച്ചേക്കുന്നത് ഇപ്പൊ നമ്മൾ പറഞ്ഞുകൊണ്ടിരിക്കുന്ന ടെൻ പോയിന്റ്സ് യു ക്യാൻ റൈറ്റ് എനി ഫൈവ് പോയിന്റ്സ് വി ആർ ഡിസ്കസിംഗ് ഓൾ ദ പോസിബിൾ പോയിന്റ്സ് ഒരു <laughs> 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 അതായത് നമുക്ക് എത്ര പോയിന്റ്സ് ആണോ റിപ്പിറ്റേഷൻ ഇല്ലാതെ എഴുതാൻ പറ്റുന്നത് റിപ്പിറ്റേഷൻ ഇല്ലാതെയുള്ള പോയിന്റ്സ് എഴുതുക പിന്നെ അതേപോലെ തന്നെ പർപ്പസ് എപ്പോഴും ഡിഫറെന്റ് പേർപ്പസ് കൺഫേം ചെയ്യുക ബട്ട് പേർപ്പസ് സെയിം ആയാലും പ്രശ്നം വരില്ല പ്രൊസീജിയർ സെയിം ആവാതെ എഴുതാൽ മതി ഇപ്പൊ എല്ലാത്തിനും അഞ്ചു കാര്യത്തിന് എൻക്വയറി എൻക്വയറി എന്ന് എഴുതി വെച്ചു അങ്ങനെയാണ് നിങ്ങൾക്ക് മാർക്ക് കിട്ടില്ല മനസ്സിലായോ സിനാരിയോ സ്പെസിഫിക് ആണെങ്കിൽ എല്ലാത്തിലും ഈ പോയിന്റ്സ് തന്നെ യൂസ് ചെയ്യാം അപ്പൊ ഓരോരുത്തരും എന്തായിക്കൊണ്ടിരിക്കും പേർപ്പസ് മാറിക്കൊണ്ടിരിക്കും നമ്മൾ ചോദിക്കുന്ന കാര്യം അല്ലെങ്കിൽ ചോദിക്കുന്ന ആള് മാറിക്കൊണ്ടിരിക്കും മനസ്സിലായോ അതിന് വേണ്ടിട്ടാണ് ഈ പോയിന്റ് പഠിക്കുന്നത് സിനാരിയോ സ്പെസിഫിക് ആയിട്ട് എഴുതാനായിട്ട് അതുകൊണ്ടാണ് സിനാരിയോ സ്പെസിഫിക് ക്വസ്റ്റൻ വെച്ച് തന്നെ പറഞ്ഞായിരുന്നു ഓക്കെ വേണ്ട 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 ജസ്റ്റ് ഐഡന്റിഫിക്കേഷൻ ദെൻ ഏതാണ് ഇൻഫോർമേഷൻ വേണ്ടത് അത് പറയാം അത് പ്രൊസീജിയർ പറയാം ഇൻഫോർമേഷൻ പറയാം അല്ലെങ്കിൽ നമുക്ക് വേണ്ട ഡോക്യുമെന്റ് ഏതാണോ അത് പറയാം അതിന്റെ പർപ്പസ് എന്താണെന്നുള്ള പറയാം ഓക്കെ ഇനി എഗ്രി ഡാഷ് എക്സ്പെൻസസ് ടു സപ്പോർട്ടിംഗ് ഡോക്യുമെന്റ്സ് ഇവിടെ സ്പെസിഫിക്കലി എക്സ്പെൻസ് ആയിട്ടുള്ള സപ്പോർട്ടിംഗ് ഡോക്യുമെന്റ്സ് വെച്ചിട്ട് നിങ്ങൾക്ക് ക്രോസ് ചെക്ക് ചെയ്യാനുണ്ടോ ഇവിടെ നിങ്ങൾക്ക് പറയാൻ പറ്റുന്ന സപ്പോർട്ടിംഗ് ഡോക്യുമെന്റ് എന്തായിരിക്കും റിഡൻസി യൂണിറ്റ് കൺഫേം വെതർ ദ എമൗണ്ട് ഓഫ് റിഡൻസി ഇസ് അപ്രോപ്രിയറ്റ് ട്രീറ്റഡ് ഹൗ ക്യാൻ യു കൺഫേം ദാറ്റ് ഹൗ ക്യാൻ യു കൺഫേം ദാറ്റ് exactly you can use the post year end cash book right the redundancy is payment might be made to the employees after the year end right so how can you confirm that you can agree the redundancy provision to the post year end cash book in order to confirm whether the redundancy provision created at the year end is reasonable clear ayo redundancy provision amount in the year end sheshulla cash book ait cross check kiya എന്നിട്ട് ഇയർ എൻഡിന്റെ അന്ന് പ്രൊവിഷൻ ആയിട്ട് വെച്ചേക്കുന്ന എമൗണ്ട് റീസണബിൾ ആണോ നോക്കുക ക്ലിയർ ആയി മക്കളെ ഓക്കെ ആൻഡ് വെരി ഫൈനലി വോട്ട് യു ക്യാൻ ഡു ആസ് ഓൾവേസ് യു ക്യാൻ റിവ്യൂ നോട്ട്സ് ടു ഫിനാൻഷ്യൽ സ്റ്റേറ്റ്മെന്റ്സ് ഇൻ ഓർഡർ ടു കൺഫേം വെതർ ദ ഡിസ്ക്ലോഷേഴ്സ് ഇൻ റിലേഷൻ ടു റിഡൻഡൻസി ആർ കംപ്ലീറ്റ് ആൻഡ് ആർ ഇൻ അക്കോർഡൻസ് വിത്ത് അക്കൗണ്ടിംഗ് സ്റ്റാൻഡേർഡ്സ് ക്ലിയർ ഓക്കെ സോ ദിസ് ഈസ് ഹൗ യു നീഡ് ടു പിക്ക് ദ പോയിന്റ് ഇയർ സോ ആക്ച്വലി ഓവർ ഇയർ ദ എക്സാമ് ഹാവ് ആസ് ദസ് ടു identify 5 points and we have literally written 10 points so out of which you can filter out the best possible points for you and you can write it accordingly okay so this is how you need to pick the scenario specific point so in this case if you literally by heart and write the points in relation to provision you will not be getting sufficient mark because they have given us a scenario and the procedure should be purely be based on the scenario so if you write the points relating to the scenario you will be getting marks over there clear ഇപ്പം അങ്ങനെയാണെന്നുണ്ടെങ്കിൽ ഇപ്പം എപ്പോഴും നിങ്ങൾക്ക് ഏതൊക്കെയാണ് അഞ്ചു പോയിന്റ് കറക്റ്റ് എന്ന് തോന്നുന്നത് അത് മാത്രം എഴുതിയാൽ മതി എഴുതി ടൈം കളയണ്ട ഇറ്റ് വിൽ ബി പ്യുർലി ബി ബേസ്ഡ് ഓൺ എക്സാമിന് ബട്ട് മിത്തായിട്ട് പറയും ആദ്യത്തെ ഫസ്റ്റ് ഫൈവ് പോയിന്റ്സ് അവർ മാർക്ക് ചെയ്യുള്ളൂ എന്ന് ഓപ്ഷണൽ ആയിട്ട് വെച്ചാലും ബട്ട് അങ്ങനെ അല്ല എന്ന് പറയുന്നവരും ഉണ്ട് ഓക്കെ നമ്മളെപ്പോഴും സിനാരിയോ ആയിട്ട് മാച്ച് ചെയ്ത് തന്നെ എഴുതാം അതായത് ഇപ്പം എമൗണ്ട് ഓഫ് പ്രൊവിഷൻ എമൗണ്ട് ഓഫ് പ്രൊവിഷൻ എന്ന് പറഞ്ഞുകൊണ്ടിരിക്കുന്നതിന് പകരം യു ഷുഡ് ഓൾവേസ് മെൻഷൻ ദാറ്റ് ദി എമൗണ്ട് ഓഫ് പ്രൊവിഷൻ ഓഫ് വൺ ലാക്ക് ടെൻ തൗസൻഡ് റിലേറ്റിംഗ് ടു ദ ക്ലൈന്റ് ഇൻസ്റ്റഡ് ദാറ്റ് റിലേറ്റിംഗ് ടു ഡാഷിംഗ് കമ്പനി സോ അങ്ങനെ സിനാരിയോ സ്പെസിഫിക് ആയിട്ട് തന്നെ എഴുതാം കേട്ടോ ാണ് പക്ഷെ പഠിച്ച പോയിന്റ് ഡയറക്ട്ലി കൊണ്ട് എഴുതി വെക്കുമ്പോൾ നമ്മൾ ക്ലാസ്സിൽ പറഞ്ഞു ഞാൻ ശ്രദ്ധിക്കാം നേരെ അത് അങ്ങനെ തന്നെ എഴുതരുത് അതായത് ഇപ്പം റീപെർഫോം ബാങ്ക് റീകൺസിലേഷൻ സ്റ്റേറ്റ്മെന്റ് ഇൻ ഓർഡർ ടു എൻഷ്യൂർ ദ മാത്തമാറ്റിക്കൽ ആക്യുറസി അങ്ങനെയാണ് നമ്മൾ പഠിച്ചത് സോ നിങ്ങളോട് നേരെ ബാങ്കിന്റെ പോയിന്റ്സ് ചോദിക്കുകയാണ് അപ്പൊ നിങ്ങൾ എന്ത് പറയാ റീപെർഫോം ദ ബാങ്ക് റീകൺസിലേഷൻ സ്റ്റേറ്റ്മെന്റ് ഓഫ് ഡാഷിംഗ് കമ്പനി ഇൻ ഓർ
അതുപോലെ തന്നെ എന്തെങ്കിലും ഫിഗേഴ്സോ കാര്യങ്ങളോ അല്ല ഡേറ്റോ ക്വസ്റ്റ്യൻസ് തന്നിട്ടുണ്ട് ആ ഡേറ്റയും കൂടി നമ്മൾ പഠിച്ച പോയിന്റ്സിനകത്തേക്ക് ഇൻകോർപ്പറേറ്റ് ചെയ്തിട്ട് എഴുതുക മനസ്സിലായോ കണക്ട് ചെയ്ത് എഴുതുക അത്രേ ഉള്ളൂ അതായത് എപ്പോഴും സിനാരിയോ സ്പെസിഫിക് ആണ് നമ്മൾ നേരെ പഠിച്ച സാധനം കൊണ്ട് കോപ്പി പേസ്റ്റ് ആവരുത് കമ്പനിയുടെ പേരും അതേപോലെ തന്നെ തന്നേക്കുന്ന ബേസിക് ഡീറ്റെയിൽസ് ആണെങ്കിൽ അത് ഇൻക്ലൂഡ് ചെയ്യണം അത്രേ ഉള്ളൂ ഓക്കെ അപ്പം ജസ്റ്റ് കീപ് ദിസ് വൺ ഇൻ മൈൻഡ് വെൻ എവർ യു ഗെറ്റ് എ സിനാരിയോ സ്പെസിഫിക് പോയിന്റ് ദിസ് ക്വസ്റ്റ്യൻ ഷുഡ് ബി ദയർ ഇൻ യുവർ മൈൻഡ് ആൻഡ് യു ഷുഡ് ബി ആസ്കിംഗ് ദിസ് സെയിം ക്വസ്റ്റ്യൻസ് ടു ദ എക്സാമിനർ so you should be asking whether there is any possibility for having a discussion with the management obtaining written representation getting external confirmation from some third party reviewing correspondence between two persons recalculating or reperforming any any calculation performing analytical procedure obtaining breakdown of expenses reviewing board minutes agreeing something to the supporting documents and reviewing the notes of financial statements ab ee 10 points ortu vekka you can remember these points to write any substantive procedure relating to the scenario specific points appo ondu ondu parney endakke substantives nammal ezhudandathu discuss with the management then obtaining written representation consider getting external confirmation reviewing correspondence recalculating or reperforming some transactions performing analytical procedures obtaining the breakdown of expenses reviewing board minutes agreeing the transaction to the supporting documents and reviewing notes to financial statements is that clear everyone yes sir okay fine so now we have already discussed on a scenario where the examiner is asking us to write the scenario specific substantives so we have covered that area we have got a question on scenario specific substantive then next one please do one thing we have just already read this area anyway we will just go through the same area one more time it is 1st july 2015 dashing company is manufacturing women's clothing its air and was 30th uh, april 2015 you are audit supervisor of john t and company and the year end audit for dashing company is due to come in shortly they have told us that the company's profit is 2.6 million total asset is 18 million and we are responsible for auditing receivables and that particular balance is material and they have asked us to uh, and they have also told us they are performing positives receivable circularization so this is what it is mentioned in the scenario maragot onnu illa naga avaru parna endha positive receivable circularization aikunnundo nu mathram parnu then they have told us that we need to describe the substantive procedure other than receivable circularization the auditor should perform to obtain sufficient appropriate audit evidence to verify each of the following assertion in relation to dashing company's receivables so they have told us to write any two substantives to confirm accuracy valuation allocation because they have given us that mark will be split equally between each part they have asked us to write substantive procedures in relation to dashing company's receivables ka completeness again to confirm the dashing company's receivables rights and obligation so two points from accuracy valuation allocation two points of completeness and two points of rights and obligation so what we need to do we need to consider the substantive procedures we have studied in relation to each of this following area from the area of receivables any two points with regarding the completeness so when you write the points in relation to completeness and so that obtain uh, sorry uh, completed disclosure checklist for the dashing company in order to ensure that all disclosures relevant to the receivables have been made then you can also vouch some selected amounts from the sales and receivables ledger to the supporting documents such as sales orders and sales orders to come from the completeness of dashing company's receivables balance same as that you can use the same points so in the manner we need to provide two points relating to completeness two points relating to accuracy valuation allocation and two points relating to rights and obligation so this is something we consider as the assertion specific substantives without scenario clear is it clear everyone yes sir yes sir okay yeah sir e bank bank loan sorry bank bank loan so when it comes to bank it will be basic bank when it comes to bank loan if it is over a year it's non current liability മനസ്സിലായോ 
ഓക്കെ ഓവർഡ്രാഫ്റ്റ് ഒക്കെ പറയുന്ന സമയത്ത് ബാങ്കിന്റെ വേണം പറയാനായിട്ട് യാ ഓക്കെ ഓക്കെ സോ വിൽ ഡു വൺ മോർ ക്വസ്റ്റ്യൻ സി Please read the area of bonus in this question and requirement number C. Bonus in the guide and why is it requirement number C? Why get? ആ <laughs> 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 ഡാൻ ഓക്കെ so we have actually studied already studied the points in relating to bonus right so bonus ne kurichu eda points padichirullo nammal directors emoluments emoluments directors emoluments so first of all you go through the scenario and scenario ke thendana parneyekna in corresponding atla points pick kiya okay so we'll just go through the scenario the company's board is comprised of seven directors they are each entitled to a bonus based on draft year end net assets excluding intangible assets details of the bonus are entitled are included in the director's service contract so well they have told us two things first of all they have told us that the company's bonus will be based on year end net assets after excluding intangible asset again they have told us that uh, each of the directors will be paid bonus in relation to their director service contract okay so what we need to do gooseberry is a client company's name okay so what we need to do in relation to the two things first of all they have told us that bonus is based on year and net assets what we can do to confirm that net asset and calculation and representation eduthittane intangible asset exclude cheyittundo ആ ഇനി നമ്മൾ എന്താ ചെയ്യേണ്ടത് കമ്പ്യൂട്ടേഷൻ കറക്റ്റ് ആണെന്ന് അറിയാൻ റീകാൽക്കുലേറ്റ് ചെയ്യണം അപ്പൊ നമ്മൾ എന്ത് പറയാം റീകാൽക്കുലേറ്റ് ദ ബോണസ് പേയ്മെന്റ് ഓഫ് സെവൻ ഡയറക്ടേഴ്സ് ഓർ ഈച്ച് ഓഫ് ദി ഇൻഡിവിജ്വൽ ഡയറക്ടേഴ്സ് ടു കൺഫേം ദാറ്റ് ദി ബോണസ് പേയ്മെന്റ് ആർ കാൽക്കുലേറ്റഡ് ഓൺ ദ മേറ്റ്സ് ഓഫ് നെറ്റ് അസെറ്റ്സ് ആഫ്റ്റർ എക്സ്ക്ലൂഡിംഗ് ഇൻടാഞ്ചിബിൾ അസെറ്റ്സ് ഇൻ ഓർഡർ ടു കൺഫേം ദി ആക്യുറസി ക്ലിയർ ദെൻ next they have mentioned that details of the bonus are included in the director service contract how can you ensure that whether details of the bonus are appropriately included in the service contract contract review yes we can review the contract right we right. already studied it already so we can say that review the director's contract and ensure bonus are consistent with terms of this contract clear okay so here also you mention it in accordance with the scenario review the gooseberry company's directors contract and ensure bonus are consistent with the terms of these contracts clear everyone yeah yes, then the bonus which relate to 2015 year end was paid to each director in may 
and the costs were accrued and recognized within wages and salary for the year end ended 30th April 2015. Separate disclosures of the bonus are required in accordance with local legislation. So they have mentioned that the director's bonus payments are actually paid after the year end. And they have recorded the same amount in the wages and salaries for the year ended 30th April 2015 ka balance. And they have also clearly mentioned that separate disclosure for bonus is required as per directors, uh, sorry, as per the local legislation. So first you need to confirm whether the amount paid to the director is appropriate and whether the year end balance is correct. How can you prove that? Meaning I lose. Okay, after the year end post year end delay. Bank, um, cash book, sorry, bank statements on the Okina Makanaman's law, Etro Gurtun Laman's law, in the Rather Indua Tegrianum. Payroll. Ah, year end in Danate? Directors. Ah, directors. Bonus at Triano, wages and salary cut included the Ganola Machi no crumb, complete an honorian. Serial lie. Okay, I think not worry. Agree the post year end bank statements to the Bonus payments recognized in the wages and salaries in order to confirm that the all amount of bonus are being recorded completely at the year end. Clear? Yes. yes. Finally, separate disclosure of the bonus by directors is requ required by local legislation. How can you prove that? Review the disclosures. Review the disclosure notes in relation to the financial statements to confirm that. Director's bonus are being appropriately disclosed in accordance with local legislation yeah. and as per standards. Clear? Yeah. Is that clear, everyone? Yes. Okay. So, this is how you will be matching the points which we already learned with that of the scenario. We have already learned the points in the scenario. We have already the scenario. We have already learned the corresponding Clear? Is that clear? But it's the basis. Same participants and repeat. I know the same guy in line and repeat your talk. Any, we have already done this question, but still just to understand in the Jasmine Company. Quickly, a scenario in the wise monkey. Everyone, please go through this scenario very quickly. Done? Yes. Okay. So, Jasmine Company's trade receives ledgeries comprised of large number of customers. In the previous year, audit team has undertaken positive receivable circularization to confirm the year-end balance. However, customer response rate has been historically been low, so alternative audit procedures have to be undertaken. Decision have to be made that current year audit circularization will not be performed. Year and trade receivables balance is 3.9 million. Allowance for credit losses and trade credit losses or trade receivables is 4 lakh 10,000. So they have asked us to describe the substantive procedure. Auditor need to obtain sufficient appropriate audit evidence in relation to Jasmine Company's trade receivables. So they have just asked us to identify the procedures that need to be performed by the auditor in relation to Jasmine Company's trade receivables. And what all are the things that are mentioned in the scenario? First, they have told us that their receivables are uh, comprised of large number of customers. 
that they have already done a positive received circularization in the past year and they have not got any replies for that. So they have decided not to perform received circulation for the current year and they need to confirm the year end balance. In addition to which they have just mentioned us that the current year receives balance is 3.9 million. Allowance for credit losses is 4 lakh 10,000 as compared with that of prior year. It have been increased during the current year. So this is what they have mentioned. So what they have actually asked here. Why did they send the receivable circularization in the previous year? And what they need to confirm now? Confirm the yes, they need to confirm the year end balance is actually existing or not. So to confirm the year end balance, it means existence, right? And existence confirms normally first in the procedure and that it's the first procedure for performing the confirming the existence. We will be sending confirmation. And do we need to send external confirmation in this case? No. No, because they have told us that they have decided to perform alternative audit procedures. And have we studied about the alternative audit procedures? Yes. We have studied about the alternative audit procedures that need to be performed in relation to the existence, right? So this alternative audit procedures can be considered here. Is that clear, everyone? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. But again, when you write this, it should be based on scenario, which means review after date cash receipts of Jasmine company by inspecting bank statement and cash receipts documentation to confirm the existence. Examine the customer accounts and customer correspondence of Jasmine company to assess whether the outstanding balance specify uh, represents specific invoice and confirm their validity. What was the selected amount of sales and receivables ledger to supporting documents such as sales and sales order and sales invoice? Again, here also you can include that from the sales and receivables ledger of Jasmine company. And it should be always be considered like that. So the Jasmine company's word should be provided priority. Again, they have also told us that the allowance for credit receivable, sorry, credit losses have increased during the current year. So what we need to do there? Compare, you know. Compare, you know, compare you know, current year and previous can be compared here. And I've told you whenever you perform a comparison, can we directly compare the current year relevance with that of the previous year? Will there be any benefit for that? No. It's no. The same factor. Factor. Ah, a percentage item comparison. So how will we compare? Perform analytical procedure by comparing allowance for allowance. credit losses as a percentage of pre receivables balance ah, with that of the previous year in order to confirm the in order to consider whether there is any variance and in case of significant variance, it should be discussed with the manager. Yes, it should be further investigated. Clear IO? Okay. Yes. So this is what we consider as the scenario plus assertions, whereby we have got a scenario and they will also be getting questions on basis of assertions. Clear everyone? Sir, will you doubt it? Yes, please. Receivables in a number of percentage account receivables sales so I turn a percentage account. Receivables sales so I turn. Receivables balance are created the current in a basis of sales in a basis. Like, but elements for receivables are with but elements are with another one. Elements for receivables on the basis, sorry, elements for credit losses on the basis of trade receivables. Okay, okay, okay. Payables are negative. Payables and a purchase item. Okay. Sir, uh, comparison GM percentage in the basis of receivables in the matter and percentage in the basis of GM. Alla, either in the term, a plum percentage basis comparison or to not on another. Karnathan Varnera, if a current year allowance for receivables previous year at a compare in Oki. Abom, Namanokum, allowance for receivables of Kudi Tundu. Allowance for receivables the same matter than any other person on the land. Special receivables bonds would be about a good eat and angelo. I am such a good and man's liar. Abom Adunda number of current year letteriano receivables which no come allowance other previous year later to compare in no carnum other random same on a personal percentage figure on the same on the real person. I don't know the check in the top. Okay, okay, so scenario basically they were a comparison to the Ladilum. They were a Okay. Industry based 
Done. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes. So, in the past, K company has received negative press report over the condition of its fast food restaurants, with comments suggesting that they are old-fashioned and tired-looking. Therefore, during the year, company undertook a full review of its assets and carried out extensive refurbishment to majority of its restaurants. This review resulted in a significant amount of aging fixtures and fittings being disposed of. And significant amount of capital expenditure was invested in all remaining restaurants. They have asked us for six marks. They have asked us to provide substantive procedures to prove the sorry to obtain sufficient appropriate audit evidence in relation to the above matters. So what they have actually mentioned us. So K company is having negative press reports against the company's fast food restaurant chain. They are telling that the restaurants are old fashioned. So they have asked us to refurbish it. And what the company have done. So that's the important part. What the company have done for that? Disposable. Disposable. Okay, they have disposed of some of the assets and again. In uh, investing. Invested in some capital expenditure, which means capital. they have added some capital. So which means there is addition of Edition. assets and disposal of assets. So once after picking the uh, particular thing in the scenario, it will be very easy to give the answer. Any other part on Mm -hmm. It's all about addition and disposal of asset. So you can include equal points for addition and is equal points for performing the disposal of the assets. Clear? Yes, sir. Clear, everyone. So that first one is a scenario specific question. The second one is a direct question. The refurbishment was financed via share issue in 2015 at a premium of 1.6 million. So what they have mentioned us is regarding the share issue of 1.6 million at Premium. So, what is the most important point that you need to refer here? Premium separated. Uh, you need to review uh, the split between share capital and share premium and share in premium. order to confirm that only the nominal value of share is included within share capital and remaining share capital being included within the premium. Share premium. Yeah, clear. Okay, and other than that, you can include three points in relation to the share issue as well. Is it clear, everyone? 
So, okay. So this is how you will be getting four sort of questions in relating to the substantive procedure. You will be getting general procedures, scenario specific, assertion specific, scenario specific, assertion specific. So whenever you include substantive procedures, always keep it in mind that you must purely read the scenario because if something goes wrong with the requirement or with the scenario, if you particularly miss a particular assertion or whatever things being missed in the scenario, you will not get marks for substantives. And when you get general substantive, you must always consider writing points according to the pre-learned theory. However, on the basis of that, sorry, on the other hand, if you're getting a scenario specific substantives, you should clearly provide the substantive procedures according to the scenario itself. So what all are the things that you have to consider while providing a scenario specific assertion, sorry, scenario specific substantive, you have to think whether there is any possibility of having discussion or having an inquiry with the management, then where in the can obtain written representation, then external consultation, correspondence, performing recalculation, re-performance, analytical procedures, you can review the breakdown of expenses, then you can review board minutes, then you can agree the transaction, then you can also review the notes to financial statements. Is that clear, everyone? Paka? Yes. Okay, fine. So this is what you need to consider with regarding the sir, procedures. Yes, please. Uh, sir, up previous question the Namaka Nala Mark R Mark scenario based Ambernile. Apatinata in an hour than day. Alala. About a scenario based on the Namaka scenario plus general level another. Because our number in the key, there is nothing much mentioned in the scenario. They have just told us that they have added some of it and disposed of that. So, addition in disposal name points are the Amadi. Manslaya. Okay, sir. Even addition disposal in a Sidu, other than the Koranum revalue Sidu, I'm going to cover an island time around scenario specific. I'm purely okay. Okay, sir. Yeah. So, Elar can clear on a substantive in a guardian. Is that clear, everyone? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So we will be doing much more questions relating to substantive after the crash course as well. So before that time itself, you have to complete the substantives. Whoever who are yet demanding to complete the substantive should complete this part. And we have to start with the question practice again before having our mock exams. Okay. So this is how mock exam and under Okay. Next week. Probably Monday. Okay. Yeah. So Oh, we will practice that as well. Sir, direct question, sir. Oh, direct question, sir. Are the uh, substantives in there, no? Substantives are direct question. You can see the first question. The scenario is not going to be directly. The scenario is not going to be directly. What are the substantive procedures that need to be performed by the auditor to confirm the year and sales tax liability? That's right, sir. What is the reason? What is the reason? What is the reason? What is the uh, the, the important theory is no longer. No? Ah, the last class is We have got two more additional days now. Okay. So the upcoming days plans will be like this. Tomorrow we will be having discussion on reporting and uh, corporate governance. Day after tomorrow we will be having discussion on ethics and MCQs and other theoretical areas. Okay. So this is what you need to learn with regarding the area of substantives. So substantives in the questions, LRM atom properly practice here. Do learn the substantives first. And after that, just go through the questions. We will also be practicing additional questions relating to substantives from the class itself. So everyone should ensure that your substantives portions are completed on time because it's one of the most important area for the paper AA. Okay. All right. So crash course Ah, yes, 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 of course. Okay. So, Abam, LRM, Ithrain Karingla, Atom properly participate. Okay. All right. Okay. So, that's it, guys. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir.